Welcome back everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this episode, we will fix some things from the last episode and also start to add what we need in order for our combat to work. So, without any further ado, let's get into the episode right away. Before we get into the core part of this update, let's uh, address two things. One is, when we click a tower here, we can change the tower, what we want to place. But we cannot deselect it, so no matter what we do, we have to place it. And that's not really a good thing. Maybe we change our mind, we don't want to place a tower, whatever. The easiest way to do this is to go to our keyboard listener. And whenever we press escape, if we have something selected, we clear it. And in here for our key pressed method, where we check game state is equal to edit, we copy this and add a else if game state equals playing instead. And if that's the case, then we say game dot get playing key pressed and e. And we don't have any, have any key pressed in our playing, but uh, let's add that. Right above all our mouse events, we add a public void key pressed and the input will be key event e and the class doesn't recognize key event so we need to import it like so and in here we can add a check if e dot get key code because every key on our keyboard has a unique id or rather key code if that corresponds to key event dot bk escape, so we press the escape button. If that's the case, we deselect the selected tower. And our selected tower was just called selected tower. So down here, select the tower equals null. So we set it to null. And that should work. Let's give it a try. Could be some bugs, but uh, we'll see. We can place it like normal, but now we selected a archer and we press escape. Boom, it's gone. Perfect. So that was the first small thing we needed to fix. And the second fix we need to do is a highlight for the current tile we are above with our mouse. So if we are above this corner here, we should have some sort of highlight that tells us what tile we are over with our mouse. And that's pretty easy to fix. All we have to do is to go to our playing and where we have our draw method or render it's called, we can call the method draw high light and G and we save create the method and in here we will simply add a border for the current mouse x and mouse y so g dot draw rect mouse x mouse y 32 and 32 i think that is going to be a right we might need to plus one minus one something like that and uh, let's set the specific color so g dot set color color dot let's go with pink actually see how that looks and then play so now we have a highlight of the current tile we are over maybe a different color let's uh, go debug and see what we can find you can put whatever color you want but i think uh, the white is uh, the one that shows the best black works too but uh, this is completely up to you what you want for color so if we have towers placed around like this, we know that we're going to click on the archer or click on the wizard right here. And there should also be a some sort of border for the current tower that we selected. So if we have several archers like so, and I click an archer, you don't know which archer you are referring to. But uh, if we have some sort of border around the turret as well, then we know, ah, it's that turret we are trying to upgrade or trying to sell. So let's add that real quick too. And I think we need to go to our action bar. And in, the, and in our action bar, we have this method called display tower, which we created in the last episode, where if we find a tower in the grid we're selecting or clicking on, 
Then we send that tower to the action bar and it's being saved as display tower. And then we see the display tower at the border of our game. And we can probably use this one. So all we need to do is where we have our draw display tower. Yeah, we're going to use the same method here actually. So we're already checking if the display tower is not null. Then we can say draw selected tower border. So we know exactly what it what it does. Save and create the method right underneath here. And then we do something very similar to what we did just previously, but we can set a new color. So g.set color, color.green maybe. Um, let's go that one. And then g.drawRect, we have selected tower.get x, selected tower.get y, um, 32. And 32. I think this is going to work, so let's give it a try. Well, this isn't correct because now we have the border, but it's up in the left corner for some reason. So let's try and figure out why. Well, sometimes I'm a little stupid and it's not supposed to be selected tower. It's supposed to be display tower. So let's place that there and change this one to another name, refactor name. It's supposed to draw this blade power border. Now we save that and hopefully it will give us the result we want. Place a tower, click the tower. Now we have a border around that tower. So yeah, it's working. You can set to whatever color you want and let's see if we can change. Yeah, and we can deselect. Yeah, it's working and a little wizard. Yeah, it works good. All right, with these fixes in place, let's get into the core part of this episode. To get some combat going in this game, we're going to need a few things, both for our towers and also our enemies. And our enemies will need health. And we will also display some sort of health bar to see how much health they still have left. And for our towers, we're going to need three things. We're going to need some damage. We're going to need a range that determines how far the tower can shoot. And we also need some sort of cooldown for our turrets so we can control the attack speed. So let's get that going and add those variables first. So let's begin our work in our enemy class. We already have the variable health in here. And we will add a method in here which we will call from each of the enemies to get the correct health. So first we're going to name it protected void set start health. And this one will call a other method in our constant class, but we don't have that method yet, but we're going to call it anyway. So helps dot constant dot enemies dot get start health and we will pass in the enemy type and of course we need it to return to our health equals like so i'm going to copy this one and go to our constant class in our enemy class here we add a public static int get star health int enemy type and in this method, we're going to add a switch, just like the one above. But instead of returning floats, we're going to return integer. So 100 for, say, the orc. The bat is much easier to kill, so I don't know, 60. This is values we're going to have to play with a lot to get, get it right. The knight is much stronger, so say 250. Wolf is also quite fast, so say 84. 85. And in case we add a enemy type integer that doesn't exist, we say return zero, so no health. Let's go to our first enemy, which is the bat in this list. And to initialize the HP now for our bat, we simply call set start health, which calls this method right here and returns the health to our bat. We pass in the bat type and we get the bat value. That's all we need to do. So let's do that for all of them. Just copy that. 
knight, orc, and the wolf as well, like so. So now all the enemies have health, and now let's do the same for our tower. And we currently don't have any tower subclasses, and I think we won't need them. We could do exactly like we did with our enemies, but let's keep this one different just to see what the difference is in the long run. So all we need to do is to go in our constructor here and then just say set default damage. And we need one for range, set default range. And the last one for our cooldown, set default cooldown. And we need all of these methods, so let's just create them, like so. Let's just move our constant class over here. So in our constant class here, in our towers inner class, we add a public static float get start damage. And we need a int tower type. And we need another method, public static float. And you guessed it, we're gonna take the switch and place it in each and every one of them. But we're not gonna return a string, we're gonna return a damage. So cannon, let's say um, 25 maybe. Archer, 15. Wizard is supposed to slow, but a little bit damage, so let's say 5. And if all those fail, return zero. Let's just copy this switch and place it in all of them. And for our range, I have no clue what will be a good, but let's just put, put 100 here. So most likely later we will change that. Let's just say 100 for now. So our cooldown right here should be the amount of updates in between shots. So let's... Um, Go with 10 for all, and we will play around with those values later as well. So now all those values have been set. Let's go back to our tower here and add a private float damage range and cooldown. And right now the switches only return integers, but we have float values for our damage range and cooldown. And we're most likely going to change those to something else that's not a whole number so let's just keep them at float so we don't get any weird bugs so for cooldown we say helps dot constant dot towers dot get default cooldown so let's do this for the other two as well and uh, maybe we need to set them to something as well cooldown equals range equals and also damage equals and save and down here we're gonna add a source getters and setters and we're gonna select getters only and generate so get damage get range get cooldown perfect and let's just run the game and see if it still works like normally yeah it does good this is probably a good time to end this episode, and in the next one, we will start using the newly added variables. We could have included it here, but that would have made this episode quite long, so a few episodes is required for this topic, just like the tower parts. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. The next update should come out very soon. Take care now, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.